so picture the scene the characters see the leader of the opposing army far off in the distance astride his dragon steed or maybe they are venturing underground in a lost cursed tomb and when they lift that final statue a multitude of rats appear in the corridor or maybe they're even walking down the street in a not so quiet village and get accosted by a group of beggars or drunken thugs well this for the gm might be difficult do you roll initiative for every rat and hit rolls for every creature and do they get opportunities to parry or maybe dodge well if you want to engage with these large scale combats then fear not because mithras has you covered with their rabbles and underling rules my name's in rules and welcome to the in crowd <laughs> Hello and welcome back. You have stumbled across another short rule video. Now in these videos, I try to take one aspect of the Mithras rule system and look at it in some depth, but also make it really focused and a short video. So in this video, we're going to be looking at the rabbles and underlings rules. Now these are optional rules for when characters are facing as the core rule book suggests ravaging or raging hordes of inconsequential and expendable adversaries. Now in these instances with a large force that the party need to attack or defend against the main combat rules for Mithras are far too detailed and these should be saved for battling that final commander or taking down the mummy. They're not designed for mass combat with quite insignificant opponents. So there are two optional set of rules to deal with these insignificant adversaries. There's the rabbles rule and the underlings rule. And we're going to start off by looking at the rabbles. Now, the rabbles optional rule is for large groups of opponents who have little fighting prowess and will probably flee the scene as, some, as soon as some blood is shed. Think about drunken mobs, mindless followers of an evil cult, or even rats and beetles attacking en masse. Now, underlings are more competent foes, and they're usually sent en masse to cause the characters some issues or just to attack them. These um, underling groups can um, include the infantry of an army, some bodyguards or assassins. And these groups of underlings can be quite dangerous for the party, especially if their underlings manage to catch the party unawares. OK, so I'm going to have a look at each of these separately. So let's start off about rabbles. OK, so a rabble has the following characteristics. So first things first, they have little or no armor. Just remember that drunken mob or those wild um, villagers carrying pitchforks. Now, they're too incompetent to use special effects in the combat. So all that's taken away and they have hit points equal to one fifth, which you're going to round up of the constitution plus size of the average member of that race. So I'll just say that again, hit points are the same as one fifth rounded up of constitution and add size of the average of that race. Now, it's really important that um, you understand what will happen to members of that ravel when combat starts. So first things first, um, once they've received 
any damage at all, that's it. They stop fighting, they're running or whatever. If their damage is less than their hit points, they flee cursing and yelling in fear. They obviously pick the wrong group of adventurers to engage with. If the damage equals or surpasses their hit points, they collapse, clutching their wounded location and bleed out on the floor, crying out in agony. And if the damage is double their hit points, they die in a spectacular manner. And in situations like this, I often leave the narrative or pass the narrative over to the player and say, okay then, what's just happened? The other important thing to remember is that once one third of their number are dead or wounded, the rest of the rabble will break up and take flight and the party will be left stood in the middle of the street surrounded by those dead or bleeding out rabble. Now before I start talking about underlings please consider liking, commenting and subscribing to this channel. I produce regular videos about Mithras from actual play sessions also some personal blogs and a video all about GM or a video series about GMing called the Gibbering GM. So if you're interested in any of those, then why not subscribe and press that bell button so you'll get a notification when a new video is uploaded. Also, please remember that you can support the channel and me by heading over to our Patreon page where there are a series of um, tiers for you to subscribe to. And also you can join my Ko-fi page or Coffee page where you can give one-off donations and some have some behind the scenes views, uh, a view about things. So for example, both Patreons and Coffee donators get to see the bloopers from this video. Okay, whatever you do, whether or not it's watching, liking, share, sharing, please accept my thanks and huge appreciation. You are taking me ever closer to my dream of being a full-time content creator. Okay, enough of self-promotion. Let's get back to the underlings. Okay, underlings are slightly more dangerous than a rabble and can cause the party some damage. So underlings wear moderate amounts of armor, so they will have armor probably over their vitals locations first, so things like chest, abdomen and chest and head. Okay, um, there'll be moderate armor, they won't be super expensive. The other thing about underlings is that they are freely able to use special effects. Okay, so if they do score a hit, um, then the chances are they will use a special effect. And then finally, underlings have the hit points equal to one fifth of their constitution plus size, um, and then use the average characteristics for that race. So in that aspect, they're the same as rebel, um, rebels. Now, Again, there's some rules to implement uh, to, or to tell you what the underlings will do um, once they've taken damage. Okay then, so unlike the rabble that takes one damage and that's it, they cease fighting. Underlings, once they've received two injuries, will cease fighting and if possible, withdraw cursing and yelling as they go. If the damage is equal to or surpasses their hit points, they automatically fail an endurance roll, suffering the effects of a serious wound on that location. Now, if the damage delivered to one of the underlings is, is double their hit points, then they die straight out, well, some gruesome or violent manner. And it's with this that I often allow the players to describe that. And finally, taking the underlings as a whole, once half their number are dead or wounded, the rest of the underlings head off. They're going, they're leaving, they're getting out there. So hopefully you can see that the rabble is a lot weaker than the underling group or the underlings are stronger. 
And I think this really um, shows the difference from those two groups of mobs of um, uh, um, monsters. And But at the same time, the underlings will hopefully cause the party a little bit more aggro than a group of rabbles. Now, I said that this video was about rabbles and underlings, but I just want to sneak something else in there that I found useful for animals especially. And that is the insect swarm rules that are within the um, core rule book. Now, these are on page 251 if you're interested. And the reason I like these insect swarm is that it talks about the size and how much of the character it will cover. Now, I used this um, in a recent adventure that we had called the Dark Tower, where the ground floor was overrun with swarms of black beetles. Yes, yes, I just finished watching The Mummy. Um, but this allowed me to almost like demonstrate what was being covered. Uh, well, what part of the body was being covered by these black beetles. So just so you know, the, the size of an insect swarm tells you how big it is. So if the size is sort of like six, um, six or higher, then at six, there's enough of them to cover half of the body of a, a general human. So both legs, both arms, whatever you, you really want, but only half. As this insect swarm gets up to 12, it can start to engulf the whole person. And, you know, somebody who's tripped and fallen down is then going to have beetles crawling um, all over them. As you can imagine, there's nothing scarier than a player who finds it themselves on the floor and able to get up completely covered in, say, ants or bees or even worse spiders so if you would like your party be to be attacked by a large number of foes then why not try out the rabble or the underlings rules in your next campaign or even maybe a swarm of some kind of insect or arachnid can um, attack your party and believe me you'll be quite pleased about the effects a swarm of insects can do on your party. Remember, if you have any rules that you would like me to cover or explore in these short videos, then please do let me know in the comments below. And you can also find there the links to my Patreon and Kofi account and all the other content that I produce for Mithras. So until next time, I hope all your opposed roles are successful and reward you with a well-deserved special. Happy Mythwrestling, everyone. See ya. Bye.